Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today for our college visit series. We are very excited to have Mary Baldwin University with us today and Nora Maturi is here and she's going to be sharing lots of wonderful information with us. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I am excited to be here with you all today. Um, I have a brief presentation set up that I will go over um, and, and then hopefully touch base with you later on. So I have my contact information at the very end of the presentation and I've also included Allison McIntyre, who's the admissions counselor that recruits from your area. So you could reach out to either of us. We'll be more than happy to chat with you. Um, we know that this has been quite an unconventional year with everything that's going on. Um, but we want to make sure that the college process is still as exciting as it normally would be. Uh, we want to answer all the questions that you might have, connect you with all the folks here on campus, um, and then get you to apply if you haven't done so already. So I'm going to go ahead and begin my presentation. So I just want to start off with what's really important to us here at Mary Baldwin, um, and that's our students. Um, and on this slide, I actually have a brief quote from a student named Michaela that we were so lucky to work with here at May Baldwin, and she's actually from the Richmond area herself. Um, and I'm not going to read the quote just yet, but I, I'll have it there for students in case they want to refer back to it. But she says, you know, she dealt with a lot of insecurity in high school and middle school. And she came to college and she was expecting to sort of hide in the background of the class. Um, but coming to May Baldwin, where, you know, our classes typically cap off at 35, and those are for our introductory courses, and average at about 17, she really had no choice but to speak up. So she had to raise her hand in class. She had to engage in debates. She had to ask her professors questions and, and talk to her peers. So she really stepped out of her comfort zone. Um, and for us, that's what college is about. So we want you to get to Mary Baldwin um, and start thinking outside the box in terms of what you want to do while in college. And that could be academic. It'll, it could also be um, in extracurricular. So in sports, in clubs and organizations, um, and study abroad. And I'll touch base on that a little bit as we get through the presentation. But we want you to start thinking about how else you could, you know, build on your resume, how else you could gain a skill set and apply that here um, on campus and beyond after, after graduation in graduate school or in the career that you do end up in. Um, so for those who don't know much about Mary Baldwin, we are, you know, a small private university located in state in Virginia. Um, from you all, I would say it's about maybe an hour and 40 minutes away. Uh, we're just one block away from our downtown area, which is great. Students have access to coffee shops, boutiques, restaurants, and, you know, the folks down there are very excited about Mary Baldwin students. Typically, in the beginning of the fall, they would have stickers on their windows just saying, welcome Mary Baldwin students, come on in. Um, they have coupons for you all to utilize and go explore. Um, so we're very lucky to have that access right in our backyard. Um, Stanton was actually voted one of the top 20 small towns in America um, and best Main Street. So again, just in, in a short block, um, which you could walk very easily, um, there's tons for you to explore. Um, we're also, you know, extremely diverse here on campus. We know that's important for students for you to, you know, get to a campus community where you feel as though you belong, but also look around and see folks that look just like you. Um, and that extends beyond just our student body, but also in the faculty and staff here and in the programming that we offer for our students. We want you to be represented in all aspects. Um, so our class of 2022 is actually 58% students of color. Um, we do have students from 39 different states and six different countries. Um, so you're able to really mingle with people from different backgrounds um, and expand on that a little bit. So just to give you um, an example, you know, using myself, I'm an alumna here, Mary Baldwin. My family is originally from Kenya and East Africa. Um, and we, you know, lived in New York and moved to Maryland right about my senior year. So I hopped around quite a bit. Um, and one of the reasons I chose to come to Mary Baldwin was because I, I bumped into a faculty member here while I was on tour and she had worked extensively in East Africa. She spoke Swahili fluently. Um, she actually ended up inspiring me um, to pursue the major that I did. I was an international affairs major. Um, so I, I was sitting there and I'm, you know, I'm thinking, what are the odds that I'd bump into someone who's so experienced in my culture here in a you know, small rural Virginia? Um, and I was really you know, surprised 
surprised by that and I enjoyed um, having that connection with her as, a, as an advisor, as a faculty member, but also as an individual. Okay, so by putting our students first, really, we want you to take what you learn in the classroom and apply it into the real world. That's the end goal. Um, we know that you're coming here for a degree, but um, it has to make sense. You know, you're gonna utilize it for something after graduation. So we offer wonderful ac academic opportunities to students that as soon as they arrive their freshman year. Um, you know, we have over 50 majors and minors currently on campus. Um, but then we also offer internships and volunteer opportunities as well for students here. Um, typically, we have, you know, a capstone project for students that they would complete their senior year. Um, and it's, it, it could be anything, you know, we have students who are, you know, participating in a practicum um, downtown, they might be at the law office or at the um, local law enforcement office, and they're gaining some of those more practical skills. Um, but then we also have students who are, you know, working on hardcore research. We've actually had some students who have gotten their work published um, before graduating from Mary Baldwin. But we don't want you to wait until you're a senior to start, you know, gaining some of those experiences. We want you to jump right in when you arrive of your freshman year. So what we typically do um, is provide you with an advisor when you arrive. And this is someone that you would meet with periodically, you know, before you register for classes, just to make sure that you're on track. Um, but then they're also letting you know what's going on on campus and what they think might be a good fit for you um, and, let, and asking you to participate in those kinds of events as, as well. Um, we do have over 50 clubs and organizations. Um, and if there's anything that you're passionate about that we don't have, um, the beauty about a small university is that you could go ahead and start it yourself. So we've had students that we've worked with, even here in the admissions office, uh, who were interested in, and I'll give an example, you know, we had a student who's really interested in hiking and we're right in the Shenandoah Valley. So there's tons of those um, activities around us but we didn't have a club. So he got together with a group of friends, um, met with an advisor, and he started his own outdoor adventure club. So it could be anything that you're, you know, looking to pursue in college as well. Division three athletics here at Mary Baldwin. Um, and then we also offer a ton of resources. So I think my favorite would be, um, you know, Center for Student Success, which is located right at the bottom of our library, um, conveniently in the center of campus. Um, we offer a writing center down there, a quantitative center down there, um, and they're also, you know, providing you with life skills um, alongside assisting with academics. So I know like our quantitative center um, helps students with taxes. They start talking about student loans and, and consolidation and how to repay them, how to start thinking about that as well. Um, we have tutors for all subject areas. And if you yourself are excelling in a class and you'd like to gain some extra cash and you know tutor your peers, you definitely can do so down there. Um, and then we have our Office of Personal and Professional Development, our Vantage Point office. Um, Lindsay Walsh and Nell Desmond do a phenomenal job down there and, and you know, pairing students with a, um, internships in our local community. We use a platform that we call Handshake for that. Um, but then also just to talk you through um, resume building or, you know, I have certain skills and I don't know what kinds of majors I should be considering. Um, that would be a good spot for you to go and get some of those questions answered. Okay, so I touched base on this a little bit um, briefly. We do have over 50 majors and minors, um, 11 graduate degree programs here at Mary Baldwin, um, roughly right under a thousand students living with us residentially. So again, you are seeing, you know, the same faces walking down the sidewalks. Uh, I was saying this earlier, um, you know, to you, April, that I, you know, I'm not too good at names, but I remember faces. And so it's good to walk around campus and, you know, see someone that you recognize Recognize. You might be in a class with them, they might live in the same hall as you, or you might have seen them at a game uh, because you were cheering on one of your friends or something. So it's really good to have that connection with folks here on campus. Uh, classes average at 17 with an 11 to 1 student faculty ratio. So your professors know you. Um, they call you out sometimes, you know, they want to reach out to you if you don't come to class or if you're sick. They want to provide you with all of the information that you might have missed. They might, you know, say, hey, you know, uh, you mentioned that you're interested in this club or you're thinking about going to this graduate school or this particular job um, this is what's going on on campus i think you should check it out so it's really good to have you know folks that are really invested in you academically um, rooting for you behind the scenes so i think that helps you excel um, in ways that are un unimaginable here on campus 
Um, in terms of special programming, you know, we do, uh, we were historically an all women's institution. Um, and when we did decide to go co-ed, we wanted to keep some of those programs that um, were created specifically for our women and women's empowerment. Um, and so these four here are still active on campus currently and anyone is, you know, more than happy, uh, more than welcome, sorry, to participate in them. Um, you know, a college for women specifically um, is created for um, women to build on strengths um, and develop leadership skills. Um, they have several events throughout the year for students to participate in, um, including a women's symposium uh, around the springtime. So we're actually preparing for that currently. Um, and then a ton of alumni based networking events as well. Um, and then the second one, uh, Virginia Women's Institute for Leadership is actually the only all-female cadet corps in the country. We offer all branches of the military here at Mary Baldwin. Um, students are, you know, taking ROTC, but are participating here on campus on leadership classes, but also at BMI. Um, and we do have shuttles the bus students back and forth. Um, we do offer a civilian track um, for students who might not necessarily be interested in commissioning as an officer upon graduation, but would still like to participate in the ROTC leadership aspect of this program. Um, and we do offer ROTC for men as well here on campus. And then our third program, which is the program for the exceptionally gifted, um, um, is a, you know, a program for students as young as 13. These are students that are thinking about skipping high school and coming to college. They do earn a four-year degree here with us at Mary Baldwin. It's really exciting to have them in the class with you. I mean, uh, they're just really brilliant and young. Um, it adds to the dynamics of the conversation. Uh, the only difference is that this is a living learning community, so they have their own living space, but they are immersed in all activities here on campus. And then the fourth program, um, our Ida B. Wells program, um, is for women of African descent who want to explore culture, identity, civic engagement here on campus. Uh, we do put forth um, several programs for them throughout the year through this particular um, um, program here at Mary Baldwin. And I'm happy to chat about this as well with students individually afterwards. Um, so I know I've done a lot of talking, but I really just hope I, I got um, some students excited about the um, admissions process. You know, we are still open for applications. Uh, we're rolling admissions, so we'll, you know, we'll read your app whenever you're ready to submit that. Um, you know, it's a free application, fairly easy to get through. Um, we try to streamline it the best we can because we know things are complicated right now, so we didn't want the application process to be a hassle for you as well. Uh, so we try to simplify it <laughs> as much as we can. Um, it, you know, it's on the common application, but it's also on the Mary Baldwin website. No preference whatsoever um, on what platform you use to submit your application, just whatever you're most comfortable with. Uh, we typically get back to students within about two weeks or so after they submit an application. So uh, we're getting through those as quickly as we can. And then following up with you if we do need any additional um, information from you. Uh, we're currently test optional, um, but you know, I always say to students, you know, if you'd like to submit any su supplemental documents along with your application, we'd be more than happy to. Um, I know there's some, a few students who might have taken the SAT or ACT, even though we're test optional, um, they still, you know, opt to submit that. Um, we also have students who might want to submit an essay or a letter of recommendation along with your application, even though we don't require any of those documents, you're more than welcome to. Um, and typically, an, an MBU student have mostly A's and B's on their transcript. Um, I always say, if you feel as though you don't fit in that average, that is completely fine. Still apply. Uh, we want to work with you. We are, you know, a big opportunity school. Uh, we want to look at your transcripts, what kinds of classes you've taken while in high school, and take that into consideration. Um, and then everything else that you've been a part of while at school. So all those extracurricular activities, uh, please feel free to share those with us as well. And the last piece, um, financial aid, we know that that's really important. Uh, for us, we bank on being affordable, even though we're a private university. And I know that scares a lot of, you know, students away from even applying because they think, you know, off the bat that they would not be able to afford Mary Baldwin. Um, but we try to do the best we can to make sure that you're not killing your budget attending college. 
Uh, that's one thing we don't want for you at all. So um, we, you know, have kept our tuition steady since 2017. We're pretty transparent with what our cost is um, online on our financial aid website. You could, you know, get, get access to all of that information. Uh, we do offer merit-based scholarships to students that apply this year. You know, they range between $16,000 and $22,000 for students. Um, they are awarded to you by the admissions office, and it's typically based on um, the information that you provide on your transcript, um, and your, I'm uh, sorry, on your application and your academic record. So that's what we'll utilize to determine what you would get as a merit scholarship. And then my recommendation is always to file, you know, the FAFSA. So it opened up back in October 1st, um, 2020. Um, it's available for students to continue working on it currently. Um, the sooner you get it in, the FAFSA will be able to get a package out to you. Um, and that will provide you with a better breakdown of what other scholarships and grants you received from Mary Baldwin, what you qualify for federally, um, and, and what your total expected cost would be to attend Mary Baldwin. Okay. And last slide, I'll just keep this up, I guess, for, for maybe a second, um, and it's going to be in the recording, so you can always pause it at the slide. Um, Allison McIntyre, again, is the admissions counselor that recruits from your area. She wasn't able to join us today, but I'm sure she would love to chat with you all. Uh, you could send her an email, give her a call, and I'll follow up with her as well um, after this after this presentation tomorrow and let her know um, that I posted her information online for you all to access. And I put my contact information on there as well. My name is Norma Torrey. So if you are unable to get a hold of Allison or you just have a few questions for me specifically, uh, just feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to chat with you all as well. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to share this information with us today. And I have to say, I personally love downtown Stanton. I think it's like the cutest area. I love going there to visit. And just a quick question for you, since you were a student there. Yes. What what brought you to Mary Baldwin since you were from coming from out of state? Yeah. Um, so initially I applied because, you know, they reached out to me and I thought, why not? <laughs> so that's a simple, simple answer. Um, and as I mentioned, the application was fairly easy to get through. So um, I was able to submit that um, with no hesitation. And then I came for a tour. So I think that would segue into several um, um, other points that I'll make here in a second. Um, and I fell in love with the campus, to be quite honest. I was on a tour, just my mom and a tour guide, um, which was very different from some of the larger universities that I was touring where you know it was about 10 other families um, somewhere on a shuttle and I felt as though I couldn't even ask a question I was too embarrassed um, or it was just awkward so it was nice to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with a current student um, I bumped into that professor who ended up being my advisor and it just blew my mind you know again I'm, what are the odds right um, and so it just it just felt right to me. I come from a close knit family. My mom's a single mom. Um, I knew I, I wanted to have that kind of similar experience that I do at home where I'm connecting with people regularly where I have, you know, folks that I, I think would care for me as my as my parents would. Um, and so I, I, I loved Mary Baldwin for that. And then when I arrived on campus, there were tons of opportunities that were offered to me. So I, you know, was um, presenting in class. I was participating in debate. So I was forced to come out of my shell a little bit um, and work on, you know, even having conversations with people um, um, out loud. And, and I think that even helps me in my work right now. Um, and then I was able to join so many clubs and organizations. I was part of the honor society here. Um, I was a tour guide myself, so I was giving students tours. Um, I got to study abroad in Thailand for a semester while I was here, which I loved. Um, so there were just a lot of great opportunities that were offered to me. And, and in speaking with some of my friends, and I might be a bit biased here, so forgive me for that. But um, you know, for, for them, it wasn't easy to sort of get that kind of access. They had to go above and beyond and ask the right questions um, in order to figure out what was going on on campus. But for me, it was all, it was plastered right in front of my face. People were talking about it regularly. So I knew exactly where to go. Um, I knew who to ask questions and I knew how to get um, um, myself out there, if that makes any sense. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. I think it's always fun to hear like how someone ended up where they ended up and especially coming from out of state, you know, and how you heard about it and everything. So 
That is really great to know. Well, thank you. And our students you. encourage them to reach out to, to you and to Allison if they have any questions. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.